Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. And we are back. Back in business. Back. Heavy Battle Lance, Tom. Back to the Inner Sphere. Didn't Where we just do a Heavy Battle safe? start? We did a Heavy Battle start. I know, this is my safe space. Inner Sphere is my safe space, Tom. He, he was so uncomfortable touching I just this don't clan like, mix. Like, there's and the weird ones, too. Like, I can get behind, like, Yeah, we're the, getting deep into the weird mix. <laughs> the Turkina yeah. and the crossbow and all these things. Like, I don't ever want to feel those mechs. They don't excite me. You'll these change mechs excite day. me. Yeah, I know. This stuff do. is... Yeah. I'm like, ooh, I love it. This is the Heavy Battle Lance. We have... What do we have in here? Nightstar, Cataphract, Axeman, and a Bushwhacker. Again, that to me is a thematically consistent. Good. Yeah. Axeman, Bushwhacker, Cat. Uh, what is a Cataphract? Be seventy tons. Yeah. No, I meant like what is it in general? Well, I have no idea. I don't know either. It sounds like a math thing. Yeah. I wonder what it is. You can Google it. I'm gonna Google it. All right, well, and also the Night Star. So, guys, um, Night Star just sounds... That's just one of those cool 80s things where, like, sounds really cool. Yeah. Like, Night Star. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. That's all you need to know. Yeah. That's good. Okay, I'm going to look this up in the meantime. Guys, stick around. We're going to be diving into this, putting them on the turntable, and uh, giving you our opinions. So stay tuned. It's coming right up. All right, we are back. We're back. I googled. Back. I googled. googled it. Cataphract. It is a whole body suit of armor. So it's awesome, is what it is. It's awesome. There's some great pictures if you Google it of like a horse and a dude in just full armor. <laughs> just one, it, but it's yeah. all one piece. This <laughs> one, like, like they drop it with a winch on top of the whole thing. It's like the first <laughs> oh tank. Oh my god, it's pretty so funny. good. Yeah, just uh, bristling with lances. <laughs> It'd be so funny. Why didn't they ever do that? Multiple horses and just. I mean that. Yeah. Imagine. I would have done it. I have to imagine that would be so impossible to like effectively field. Like like World War One tanks were like a nightmare, you know. Sudden so most of the, yeah, we're not gonna get into it. I was just gonna say like most mechanized stuff was like wooden wheels still when tanks started coming out. See, Janus. But you get it in the right you know, place. Get it in the right place. You are in some serious trouble. Could do some devastation. I'm excited about this lance. Some weird ones in here. Uh and when I say oh. weird, I mean more obscure, right? Like oh. the Bushwhacker came out much later. The Night Star, very popular, but also not like, you know, it's not like the, you know, 3025 TRO, right? Like Axeman, um, I know people love the Axeman. I, I am curious about the, like you're saying they came out later. I wonder how they're going to mesh with the whole, um, yeah. the thing oh, we are talking yeah. about, about Adam Steiner, oh. he's one of the pilots. That's so great. I'm so glad they did that. But did they make the Bushwhacker? Who was the Bushwhacker pilot in in that in show? The, in the show, yeah. Yeah, know. there was a Bushwhacker pilot too. I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, yeah, very cool, very cool stuff. I was gonna say, like, I, w I wonder if the designs are gonna follow the pattern of like the newer mechs being a little bit more futuristic, the older mechs being a little bit more blocky and. Classic, but I don't know. I think we'll start with the Night Star. That's an interesting one. Really, want to start with the? All right, we'll start with the no, Night Star. Oh, fine. No, no, no. Okay, fine. I'll let you pick. We're starting with the Night Star, guys. I, yeah, I think that was a mistake. You're right. Let's start. Let's start with the Axeman. What about that? Let's start with the Axeman. That's the one I like the least. I'm and not gonna lie. You, you have something against melee mechs. It's I just, just so know it. weird. Why would you mount a hatchet on a thing that can shoot like a thousand meters? Sometimes you're in a city. Chopping down trees. No, I mean, yeah, sometimes sometimes you're getting close and like you're in some trouble. But then, but, you know, why don't they have like harpoons and all kinds of crazy stuff? I mean, that's a better question than why do they have an axe. That's you know? a great question. Why aren't there harpoon mechs that are just like... I, dude, if you had it, like, I used to play War Machine. Remember War Machine? We yeah. never. Did you play? You've never. No. You never played, but me and Brian would play all the time. Yeah. I used to play this faction called. I think it was called Cricks, and they were like the undead dudes. And they had this warjack that had a freaking harpoon on it, and you would like hit dudes and drag them in. It was fantastic. I mean, that makes so much. This that would be perfect if you had some like spider-sized mechs running around and then like tying them to stuff. They could run around the legs of the bigger mechs, and the bigger mechs would fall well, over. I don't think they'd have to. They like oh. harpoon it, but then like lit um like 
winch it into the ground or into a building or something and yeah. just like terrorize them. That's a yeah. great idea. You should design a mech that has a harpoon. It's a harpoon. Um, who Derek had or uh, Ares had a custom mech made, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. All I need is the arm. I'm just gonna put it on the Zeus. That's such a great. I'm instead of the LRM15. I would put on, on the um. What was that? What was the USS Enterprise? Oh, the um, turkey. Yeah. yeah. I but you just have it like yeah, right, yeah, right in its right. mouth. <laughs> 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 All right, let's take a close look at yeah. the axe man, shall we? Uh, he's got the detachable head. <laughs> he's got I the full it. right, the full head ejection, very very similar to the, um, the hatchet man, right? And you can see the the similarity, right? It also has the crazy stare like you know oh, yeah. spur things right that, does it that, have the piston jet oh it does look it has it's the got piston. the piston on the axe right um so that's all there the detail on this thing is phenomenal high level of detail on this mech yeah i think you know the one thing that bothers me about this mech if i may is the axe it's you still want it to be small oh. it's tom it's too small yeah i mean I'm just I think it's on. more realistic. Maybe. I don't know what you would do with a larger one. You'd smash things with it after your buddy harpooned them. Yeah, but I think it would just be too much mass. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he does still have... I mean, he still does have guns that he can shoot with, right? It, it, yeah, it's like, got, the, it's got the, the gauntlet of lasers, uh, you know, right there. Yeah. Very cool. Great torso mounted. Like, yeah, that's what you want Yeah, like just great stuff going on with yeah. this mech. And, you know, I, I think from a size perspective, you know, the Axeman was always like this giant... It's big. But it's 65 right? tons, you know? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I rem yeah, I think that's where I was getting off on it. And, yeah, I, yeah. and I think that this is more consistently sized with where you would expect it to be. All right. Oh, I like that, too. Look, on this foot, the, the two little side feet are, like, down. Yeah, and it's like, just so cool. it's like and taking a step. Back, it's yeah. flat. It's yeah. cool. That's a nice little detail. Yeah, love it. I, I agree, and you know, we know what we're gonna do right now. See what I just did there? Yeah, that's oh, live I mean, on camera. That's where the now all of a sudden you love it because now I love all of that. a sudden I love that. I love that so much more now that the arm is up. Yeah. Check that out. So cool. It's so good. I just made it happen. I don't have uh, an original axe man, but I'm glad I don't. Uh, I love this model. I think this this makes it look a lot cooler. I may do some more modification to it from a pose perspective. Um, I don't know that pose right there. Is you like the axe good. up? Yeah, it's I mean, pretty cool. I might put the gun back, you know, so he's like kind of. I don't know. We'll see. I will. We'll I would actually just pivot his upper body a little bit and probably bend the arm a little bit more. Yeah. Next up, bushwhacker. <laughs> All right, bushwhacker. This might be the love it. weirdest design. Love it. The weirdest, Love it. the goofiest, weirdest, most no out way. of control design. Battle Cobra. What is going on with that head? There's nothing weirder than this mech. The head's up here. The whole thing, like, yeah, well, it I looks mean, like an alien queen. There. This is right. like a mid-engine mech, buddy. Yeah, that, I, yeah. How do you design something that looks like that? Is my question. It, again, it looks like the alien queen from Alien. Listen, the Bushwhacker holds a special place in my heart from my days of Mech Warrior Four, and I will tell you. I think they did a great job with this. I mean, there's a lot of things I love about it. It's supposed it is, to... I remember the first time I saw the Bushwhacker, before before MechWare 4, I saw it in the Tiro, and I was like, man, that is the weirdest looking... Like, that is so cool. It looks like an apartment building or something. Like, <laughs> I don't not understand look like an apartment it. Building. Yeah. <laughs> All right, look. Engine it's goes so here. Weird. Ammo goes here. I can understand Guide goes there. Okay? Guns are here, here, here. <laughs> and here. There's not a... Show me another mech that's designed with this. Like, hey guys, I got an idea. <laughs> we're we're gonna build the gauntlet. Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. But um, I love the torso. The torso twists. Yeah. The one thing I will say about it that I like the most. I love the the weird ball joint arm, or not even ball joint, like a weird so cool horizontal pivot arm, like this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, I love it. I, I love the fact that they're like, no, we don't need to give it a fully functioning. Like it's gonna only be able to go this way. Yeah. The other arm, yeah, you can go. We <laughs> go can go out. You want. We can go out and we can rotate. But this one, you're only going one way. It's just really well done, though. I see it. I mean, look at the detail on the missile pods, right? Also, the and what's even funnier is that it's got the little fingers or whatever. Right, but they put that on the arm. Oh, I guess maybe it can also rotate this way. Yeah. 
So it can, it you have the, the most complicated shoulder joint I've ever seen. Listen. Dude, no, 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 you, you can't, you can't interrupt this. This is crazy. <laughs> so the first joint can rotate in 360. The second joint can rotate this way back and forth. Yeah. Then you have another joint that can then, what, allow it to flop up and down? <laughs> like what? Who designed this neck? It is out of control. It is out of control. It is the most complicated thing I've ever seen, and I love it so much. It has th one, two, three, possibly four possibly different four. Shoulder, shoulder joints. Wait a minute. So it's got one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. it's got four. It has four pivoting shoulder joints. Sh shoulder joints, yeah. To accomplish... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's unclear what it accomplishes. I love it. I, now I love it. Because like, you can endlessly look at this thing, and there, again, it's... A, I'm going to say the modelers did an amazing... There's so much detail on that thing, and it's all really interesting. Um, I can never unsee that arm now. <laughs> you're like, one? Is it it really is, it is, yeah. <laughs> it's unnecessary. It, it is, it's like, crazy. It, it's like the, it, it's like when a bunch of guys get together that are really into mechs, and they're like, when Homer Simpson designed that car, it looks, it even has oh the, my God. the body of it. It's like, you get so deep into the details, you don't realize what you're building. <laughs> I love it. Favorite Mac of the night. <laughs> you heard it here, guys. Unnecessary. Don't outputs. hate me. Don't hate me for it. I love. I do love the Mac. All right. Night Star Cataphract. Okay. Again, suit of armor. There you go. You get it. This is all you. I all love right. it. All right. So I got an old one. The mailbox. This is a mailbox. Yeah. Uh, and it looks very similar to the old one. Just better. It's spot on. Yeah. But again, you but better. Like, Nice big hand, nice big arm. Right, like then that weird, that yeah. Bit. Like the gun, the 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 cannon, like the this one, the That's old one does have cannon. like the weird multifaceted like infinite the, joints, yeah. right? Um, this one obviously much. Does it or no? Yeah. No, no, the new one. I mean, the new one does not. I mean, the old one does. Oh, it has like a classic arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I always really like that arm design. Like, oh, um, why? It's the same thing as a bushwhacker. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but, I will say, you know, the cockpit is much cooler on the new one. Uh, I hate, one, I hate the big slabs of yeah, glass. It looks like a, it looks like a, a boiler or something. Yeah. No, I mean, this new one is, is fantastic. Actually, if you lay it on its bottom, it looks like a, a, a fighter somehow, but go on. Like an aerospace fighter? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, the legs the articulation around the torso, right? Which I, mean, I guess you kind of have it there. Um, heat sinks in the legs, rear mounted lasers. You know, very prominent. So lots of lots of good stuff in. I mean, the legs on that are so atrocious. Like the the hip, like this part. Yeah, here. and you know, I I, mean, uh, I that, modified this one to have the one leg back a little bit because it's just like kind of you know the stock pose is very. Yeah. The one thing I did like is that the center of the, the one thing is I like the smoothness and that center like center bridge. Yeah. Whereas this has been again like sort of mechified. Yeah. It doesn't have that little bit of like like architectural thing there but again the the, the, the weapon arm uh -huh. i do love the classic weapon arm on yeah. that where it's just like sort of a brick yeah um do you i i don't know it's just classic man like all the mechs in that that that's what they look it was just yeah. like, like flat right the the hexagonal or, or like whatever type yeah. but yeah yeah, so, octagonal or whatever. Right, cool. angular. How is it as a mech? That's the question. Um, so the cataphract's pretty good. Uh, Jump jets. I mean, I think it's well costed. It's got you know the 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 garden variety. It's got PPC LB. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, auto cannon ten, and I think four medium lasers, two forward, two rear. Um, so it's got a decent loadout. You know, um, I think it does upgrade to an LB ten X as a uh, in, in the the clan invasion era. Maybe an ER PPC, maybe even medium pulse lasers. I don't, I don't know it off the top of my head, but um, it's a good, it's a solid seventy tonner. Yeah, I like and it. It looks like it too. You know, I like it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with uh, with the redesign. When I first pulled it out of the box, I wasn't in love with it, but you know, the more I look at it, the more I can appreciate it. Um, I think, and and you know, again, it's just, it's another one of those where it doesn't blow you away, but it's not bad. It's, I think too, if you have the reference of the old one and compare it to it, yeah. you're like, I get it. You get it. And I do like that the the two shoulders and the and the center torso head are all kind of like they echo each other. Mm -hmm. I, I really do like that. Yeah. Again, mailbox, whatever. I love it. Um, I like seeing other postal service. Yeah. 
Uh, the Postman. Right. The Night is Star. Here. This is the big one for me. You love this one, huh? I love The Night Star. It's like a bigger version of a Marauder. Marauder. No, I was going to say the, the mech we just reviewed in the clan box. The no. no. The, oh, the Ebon Jaguar. The Ebon Jaguar. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It does kind of have that Cauldron Born S look. Cauldron Born, yeah. I, I don't know. It's sort of it's got just that bigger Marauder body to me. You know, the, I mean, I love that. It's also, it just, it looks deadly. It, it looks, looks like a killer. Predator. Yeah. Like a predator. Like a predator, yeah. Uh, so I'm painting one of these right now uh, in my Winfield Brigade army. It's like, you know, jet metallic I black do the, the with the green. Weapons. Yes, and I was just going to say, like, painting the weapons, it, I did, you know, it's got that, like, that titanium. They want to do their weapons, that, that torch titanium type thing. It just really brings everything to life. I love the how you have the cockpit. And then, you know, the offset cannon here. You've got some other stuff going on down here, right? You've got these heat sinks in there. Um, and then I don't know what the hell this thing is, but it's like this giant jet turbine, right? That's just sitting in the middle, um, you know, some part of its engine, presumably. But just, you know, there's like, a, there's like an intake or something, some sort of duct. Very, very cool. So check that thing out. Huge. Thing's got two. It's got twin Gauss rifles and ER PPC two medium pulse oh, laser. That's just, I can't deal. I, I literally can't deal with. Them. Dude, Gauss rifles are honestly after facing them down the last time, they are terrifying. And then it, there's a there's one in the rec guides that has a two twin light Gauss rifles, one in each arm, a clan spec ER large laser and a clan spec ER PPC, and then a head mounted medium X pulse. 16 double heat sinks, two cooling pods, and case. How much does this thing cost is the question. So that one I just enumerated was is twenty five thirty nine. The stock variant, the one with the twin Gauss, is twenty three ninety nine. I gotta be honest with you, that sounds like a basement bargain. That uh, seems too cheap to me. Seems yeah. too cheap. I can't wait to put this thing on the table against your filthy Jade Falcons. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I need to paint up some more Jade Falcons. Uh, so here, I'll put this one in the in this camera over here. Yeah, just really, just huge compared to just this. Just beautiful. Guys. Yeah, and like not necessarily. Again, we talked about this before. It's not always just about height, you know. Like yeah. some of them are just beefier, right? Beefier, yeah. Um, and this thing definitely beefier. I love the I love the feet on this thing too. Like it looks like it's they're they're real wide. Like it is yeah. it is meant, you know, to sort of support. Uh, the, the, yeah. just the, they're the, Millennium the, Falcons, it looks like, actually, look. I love what you see. He's just crushing them as he walks. Love what you see. So let's talk about this lance. Imagine if they could fly. <laughs> just Fantastic. Lifts them up. Just lifts them up and flies away. <laughs> um, it's a great, I think this is actually a really strong. 55 to 95 tons. So you have 55, 65, 70, 95. If you took this, and this is a heavy battle, right, a heavy battle, you... You could take this as a heavy lance, mm -hmm. like straight up. Mm -hmm. You've got really fun mechs to play, I think, mm -hmm. in these two. Absolute murder, I think. Murder machine. I think that thing is a murder machine. It's a murder machine. Um, and then the, the uh, cataphract, right? Yeah. Um, Pretty good. He. It was good when you used to play him. I mean, like. Yeah. It's a solid 70 tonner, you know? Yeah. Um, the only thing I would do if I was playing this, and I, ha and I happen to have a game of armored combat lying around, I would take him out and put a catapult in i just i'm just not in love hmm. not in love with the with the axe man yeah but if you bought it you would play it and yeah. it would be a fun mech. i agree uh and i think a lot of people i have a bias against melee um yeah. i just it turns think it's, out being fun you know? i mean it's great when you can pull it off but it's just like you've got all these There's points sunk into a mech and like they end up just getting blown off the table before they can i mean no one's gonna let that thing get close to you unless you're in a city you know, match like and you let that thing hit you, you're but you don't let anything get close to you. But you don't have a choice. That's not that's the thing. Right? It's not that fast though. It doesn't need to be fast. You get that in like a, in a city, in a right? City in map. a city, in a city. That's the only time it could get close. You come around the that jump corner, jets and he goes, stuff. Give me your wallet. Bam. <laughs> Give me your wallet. The thug's like, <laughs> not <laughs> my wallet. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man. Anyway, uh, this is definitely a, a good lance. Yeah. I think I think this could be something that. A relatively new player or somebody that you know has, has played for a while and just wants to pick up something fresh 
Yeah, they're fun, and nice. they're going to be really fun to paint, I think. Um, yeah. 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 This one's already coming out. Again, really good. We'll give this Tom's total buy of the evening. To Tom, Tom buy it. Total buy of the evening. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's a good one. So we only have three boxes left, Tom. Yeah. We'll one save, we'll save like those for another boxes. night. Yeah. So. But we've got, uh, we've got the Clan Heavy Star, the Inner yeah. Sphere Fire Lance, which is my favorite because it has the Zeus in it. I saved that for Lance. And then the... Uh, the Comstar Battle. My favorite, probably. Yeah, the Tom's, Comstar. Tom's favorite, yeah. One of your favorite, the Comstar Battle. One Battles. of them, yeah. So, um, but that wraps up this one. That wraps up this one. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, this review. I love I love these, uh, I love the shells, right? I mean, it's so nice for storage. Like, look how yeah, nice they fit they in. They put the names on, too. They put the names on there. It's nice attention to detail. Catalyst did a nice job. The Axeman doesn't fit anymore. I was going to, I wasn't going to point that out, but you know it's there, right? It's fine. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, They're going to know. Anyway. They're not going to know. Everybody's going to know. Guys, if you have not subscribed, please what do something. What are you even here yeah, for? Why, why are you here? What are you watching? We've had an influx of exciting 40K gamers. Ooh, watch the uh, I got it. Yeah, I, uh, we welcome you with open arms. Open arms. It's a great game. Tom um, and I also 40k gamers. Yeah, I'm still on some like 40k groups and like like stuff. So many dudes are selling their stuff. It's crazy. Yeah. And not even like super expensive like it used to be. Just like, like take it pro, off my pro painted or whatever. No, it's like pretty. Yeah, it's it's really funny. We can talk about it later. But pro painted. That's yeah, my favorite. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Some of the stuff's really good. Some of the stuff. Yeah. I can't tell if they're not like if they're cycling out if there's like new lore or something or new meta, because um, there's a lot of stuff up for sale. So I just remember the period between sixth edition and glory days. Where did we stop with ninth edition? I never, and it was like, I bought like 14 copies of the same codex because they just over, kept releasing over. stuff. And I was like, I can't do this. Well, no, then you, needed, you needed the base rules and a codex and then another thing, right? Yeah. Just to play one hour. Well, remember they yeah. released those soft back books mm -hmm. and they're like, you're never going to need a codex again. Then like two months later, like, just kidding. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, you don't need a codex. <laughs> you need a specific army book for your one little faction you want to play. Ah, good yeah, times. They're, good times. They the racket is real for them, man. They they figured out that they got it. They got it all locked down. Yeah, Good not here you. though. They don't do that. To, they don't do that to us, thankfully. Uh, same rule books. Yeah, it's good stuff. One rule book. But I am I am excited about the uh, the new minis. I will say this actually. Let's Tell let's me. talk about the rule book thing because I just want to point this out about BattleTech too. I think because you you can make the argument that they do have a lot of books now. Yeah. But it's like. That's if you want to play more complex rules. You can start layering stuff. Yep. It's not like you need them to play. It's no. like if you and want to. And in fairness, to. you can go out to the internets right now and get the Alpha Story Quick Start rules for free. Yeah, and just play Alpha. Yeah. And and play the basic, you know, most simplistic form of the game, right? The Quick Start Alpha Strike rules doesn't, for free. Doesn't Games Workshop do that now? Don't they have like a weird... I don't know. Abridged rules. I mean, you can't version. you you can't just play units though. That's true. Yeah, you can go a master unit list. You can oh, print off fair. cards. Yeah, you can just print. You don't even need. The, you don't need yeah. sap books. That's you fair. need nothing. Okay. You need minis, and you know what? You don't even need minis. You should get them Paper. because if you don't have minis, why are you playing a war game? You're doing it wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. <laughs> this isn't a game of the imagination. If you this want that crap, go, go to Dungeons yeah, and Dragons. Play, okay, buddy, <laughs> get out of here. This is like a bar. Hey, buddy, we don't serve that kind of thing here. We got beer. I do miss playing D and D though. I do. We're I overdue. I love D and D. We're, we're overdue for a D and D campaign time. I had an idea for a story. Oh, man, it's exciting stuff. Yeah, it's about sentient mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Never. Uh, all right. So subscribe. Yeah, please come on over to Patreon and check us out. You validate uh, our existence. Yeah, Patreon's great. Uh, you can come on over and help us out there. Uh, and then also, guys, if you are looking to buy stuff, Aries Games and Minis. Yeah. I've said it a million times. Uh, whatever you want. Fighting Prana Graphics. I think, did we talk about those in this one? I think we did. Fighting yeah. Prana Graphics. Uh, Felder Cases. Dice. Yeah, books. Some real all strong books. Products. Yeah, all that, all that good stuff. Pretty much anything you need is over at Aries Games and Minis. Uh, but that's it, Tom. We're done. Done. We're done. Over. Another run of unboxing videos. We got three more boxes. And then it's battle report time. Yeah. Campaign time. Camp yeah. We're campaign. still playing. We're, we're actually still painting. We don't want to start the campaign unless we can do it with a lot of new minis. 
And yeah, that takes, was it. it takes some time to make. Yeah, we predicated that. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, it's it. But when it, when it hits, it's gonna hit. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Yeah. So much stuff in the works. I have, yeah, I, I have some fun, I think, schemes to paint up. I'm excited about yeah, that. Absolutely. All right, well, guys, thank you as always for watching, and of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death from Above Wargaming. Have a good night.